Hi guys. So as promised, here is your little bit more detailed video of how we can find some of these values uh, algebraically. All right, so you are gonna wanna check out the other video first because that's a little bit more of how we get these equations. Um, but let's take out this first one. So remember we have an X equals and a Y equals equation. This one's in feet per second. So 63T cosine 84 is our X and 63, oops, I always forget my gravity. Negative 16T squared plus 63T sine 84 for my y equals. So the first one, if we want to find it algebraically, after three seconds, how far has it traveled? Well, after three seconds, all we have to do is plug in three for t. If I plug it into the x equals equation, that's going to tell me the horizontal distance, which would be 19.76 feet. If I want to find it vertically, then I plug it into the y equals equation. Now notice there are two places to plug it in, but I would just plug that straight into a calculator to get those values. So my height there would be 43.96 feet. And that would be where how high it is after three seconds. When will the rocket hit the ground? So algebraically, this is saying when is the height zero? So I'm going to take the y equals equation and plug in zero for y. And we're gonna solve for t. So this looks kind of ugly, but what you guys need to remember, 63t sine 84, 63 times the sine of 84 is just a decimal. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into my calculator. 63 sine 84 is 62.65. So this means 62.65 times t. So if I want to solve for t here, t is the GCF. I can factor it out. And then the way I would solve this is set each factor equal to 0. So t equals 0. Well, that, that's what's happening. That's when we're starting. Okay, so that's the first one. Then for the second one, take the other factor, set that equal to 0. And I get that t is equal to that negative 62.65 divided by negative 16. And I get 3.92 seconds. Well, once we know that time, now we can answer those other two questions. So my other two questions, how long, do, oh, sorry, let's find this next one. I apologize. How long does it take for it to reach its highest point? So again, we're going to look for a t value here. So we're looking for what is our maximum of the y equals equation. So the y equals equation was negative 16t squared plus, let me go back and look here, plus 63 sine, sorry, 63t sine 84. So in order to find the maximum here, there's two ways we could do this. One, we can actually find it algebraically. Um, the actual maximum value here, if you remember how to find a maximum, um, what we use is negative b over 2a. That's how we can find a maximum value algebraically. That's where your vertex is. So negative b, that's negative 63 sine 84 over 2a. And that is going to give us our maximum value, which is 1.96. Now, the other option you could do is you could actually graph that function, and we'll do that here in a second, um, and actually find the maximum value for that particular one. All right, so I get 1.96 seconds. Now we're going to use that to answer the next two questions. So we know what time it takes. Now it wants to say what is the horizontal distance when it reaches its highest point. So take your x equals equation, and now we know what t is. It takes 1.96 seconds to get there, so let's plug it in. So we'll do our equation, which was 63, plug in t, cosine 84, and we can plug that into our calculator, and we end up with 12.91 feet. Maximum height, again, we know when, so take the y equals equation, plug in your t value. Remember, that's a t squared. And then again, just plug that into run matrix, um, and that is going to give you more exactly what that answer is. Um, and that is going to be at 61.38 feet. 
All right, let's look at our next question. So we have Jordan kicking the football. So our equations, x equals 66t cosine 40. Six, oh, I always forget gravity every time. Negative 16t squared plus 66t sine 40. So we want to know how long the ball is in the air. So again, we want to know when y equals 0, what is t? So take your y equals equation, plug in 0 for y, and we're going to solve for t here. So again, lost my sign. Both of these have a t, so we can factor t out. Then set each factor equal to 0. Well, t equals 0, that's the start. So I would do negative 16t plus 66 sine 40 equals 0. That means 66 sine 40 is going to equal 16t. So then I would divide by 16. So 66 sine 40 divided by 16 is going to give me a time of 2.65 seconds. So algebraically, that's how we can find this point. Um, now let's go ahead and look at our next question. All right, how far does it land? All right, we know how long it's in the air for, so to find how far away horizontally it goes, take your x equals equation, plug in that t value, and just do that calculation. So 66 times 2.65 cosine 40, and that's gonna tell you it's gonna go about 130, 3.98 feet away. And if that's how far it is away from the 25 yard line there. Okay, it's 25, that's how far away. All right, maximum height of the ball. So again, in order to find the maximum height, we need to know when it reaches that maximum height. So the first thing we'd have to do is negative b over 2a to give us the win. Okay, that's the win. We're going to do that for the y equals equation. So negative b over 2a, plug that into our calculator, so negative 66 sine 40 divided by negative 32. It's going to reach that highest point at 1.33 seconds. Then we want to know the height, that's your t value, plug that into the y equals equation, and that's going to give you that maximum height. And again, that, at that point, you are just going to plug that into your calculator. So negative 16 times 1.33 squared plus 66 times 1.33 times the sine of 40, and that is going to give us a maximum height of 28.12 feet. All right, so let's look at our next one. So we have a golf ball hit with an initial velocity of 135 feet per second. Let's grab my t at an angle of 22 degrees. So there's my x equals, we're in feet per second, so here's my y equals. So we want to know um, if this ball is going to clear a 25 foot sand trap whose nearest edge is 300 feet from the golfer. So again, we're trying to figure out Will this ball still be in the air after 325 feet? So let's find out when this ball hits the ground. Let's plug in zero for y, and let's solve this equation. So we've done this before. We can go ahead and factor out that t. We can set both of these equal to zero, but t equals zero is just the beginning. So I'll do negative 16t plus 135 sine 22 is equal to zero. So 135 sine 22 is equal to 16t, and we'll divide by 16. So I'm going to go ahead and plug all of that into a calculator and figure out how much time this is in the air for. Now again, remember, we still need to figure out how far it's going to go. All this is going to give us is our time. But I'll go ahead and plug this in. So it's going to be in the air for 3.16 seconds. Now let's find the horizontal distance at that point. So we'll take that 3.16, plug that in for t in my x equals equation, and that's going to tell me how far this is going to go. So this is going to travel for 395 feet. So this is definitely going to clear that 25 foot sand trap that's only about 325 feet away. 
All right, now let's look at our last one. So the last one, we're actually gonna use uh, the calculator a different way to find a little bit more of an exact answer here. Um, so Katniss shoots an arrow from a height of five feet with an initial velocity of 25 feet per second and an angle of 15. So X equals 25 cosine, oops, sorry, I always forget my T. 25 T times cosine of 15 degrees. And Y is gonna equal negative 16 T squared plus 25 T sine of 15. Now we also have to include that plus five here uh, because that's gonna change this a little bit. All right, so we wanna find the total travel time. So again, we wanna find when Y is equal to zero. So we're gonna do the same thing that we've been doing. We're gonna do zero equals negative 16 T squared plus 25 T plus five. Oh, plus 25 T sine 15, sorry, plus five. Now the difference here is this is gonna be a little bit of an uglier equation. We can't just nicely factor out a GCF. We would actually have to use quadratic formula here in order to be able to figure this out. And it's gonna be pretty ugly because my B value for quadratic formula is gonna be 25 sine 15, uh, which is equivalent to 6.47. So that's gonna be really ugly to use quadratic formula on. So what I'm gonna show you guys instead is a different way to use the calculator to get this more exact than just tracing. So we can still graph this, but instead of graphing the parametric, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna graph the rectangular y equals equation. So I'm gonna graph y equals negative 16x squared plus 25x sine 15 plus five. So let me go ahead and graph my calculator. All right, so this is the one we did previously. Um, something interesting, actually, if you wanna graph these at the same time, if I go ahead and go to type and y equals, it's actually gonna allow me to graph parametric and y equals at the same time. Now to keep us from getting confused, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these parametrics as well. Um, and you'll notice when I delete one line, it deletes the whole thing because both equations make up the parametric equation. So let's type in our y equals equation as a rectangular x equals. So negative 16 t squared, or x squared in this case, plus 25 x cosine, oh sorry, sine, we're doing vertical, 15. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some parentheses so I know that that's what I'm taking the sine of. And then I'm gonna do plus five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna graph this. Now it's not going to graph the same path. Okay, because again, we're graphing just the regular uh, y equals equation here. This is not showing the path. In this case, my x is time, my y is height. So what I can do here now, I wanna find the total travel time. I'm still trying to find when y is equal to zero. But what I can do now is I can g solve root and actually get that time and find when that time is equal to zero this way. So by doing that then, now I can see um, y is equal to zero when I get a time of 0.79, uh, 0.7 or 0.8, if we want to round it up seconds. So that total travel time is 0.8 seconds. So again, what I did is I just graphed the y equals equation. I used x instead of t, and I found the root because the root is the value when y is equal to zero. Now again, you also could have done quadratic formula. It just would have been some really ugly numbers, um, so we're kind of trying to save ourselves from doing it that way. All right, maximum height of the arrow. Now again, we can do negative b over 2a like we've been doing. But again, since these are gonna be some pretty ugly numbers, I've already graphed this rectangular equation. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is g solve max. And I can go ahead and find the maximum arrow. Now again, remember, since we're only using the y equals here, x now stands for time. This is a little bit of a different model, but I can still get that maximum height of 5.65 feet. So it's a different and actually a little bit more accurate way instead of trying to scroll with all those uh, T values. All right, when will the arrow be 10 feet horizontally from Katniss? So we wanna know when, we're looking for a T, and we wanna know horizontally. So we're gonna plug 10 into our X equals equation. So 10 equals 25 cosine 15. And I lost my T again every time. I either forget my negative 16 T squared or I forget my T. So just always double check your equations and make sure you have that. So now if I wanna solve for T, this is pretty simple. I just divide by what's with it. So I'm gonna divide by 25 cosine 16. 
So I can go ahead and plug that in. So 10 divided by 25 cosine 16. And that is going to give me the time that the arrow is that far, which is 0. 0.416 seconds. All right, and again, our squirrel question, I think I changed our notes to where this is, has 15. We also could do 18. I'll go ahead and show you guys both. Uh, we want to know if the arrow was going to hit him. So what we want to know, basically, when we're 15 feet away, what is our height? So let's figure out what our time is when we're 15 feet away. So 15 equals 25t cosine 15. And I realize now in the previous question, I apologize. I did 16 instead of 15. That'll change that answer just slightly, uh, but not too bad. Sorry about that, guys. 0.4, so it's still 0.41, just my second decimal is a little bit off. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. We'll do 15 divided by 25 cosine 15. And if you're using a Casio, it's gonna give you those uh, square root numbers. We'll just do F to D. Uh, to get the actual decimal here. So it's going to be 15 feet away at 0.2 seconds. All right, 0 0.2 sec or 0.62 seconds, I apologize. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll figure out, hey, what's the height at that time? So let's take that and let's plug it into our y equals equation. So y equals negative 16.62 squared plus 25 times 0.62 uh, sine of 15 plus 5. So I'm going to plug all that in. So 0.62 squared plus 25 times 0.62 sine of 15 plus 5. And that gives me a height of 2.86 feet. That is way over one foot in comparison, so that is not going to hit our squirrel. That's 15 feet away. Now again, if we want to try it again with 18, we would do the exact same process. We would just do 18, solve that one, plug it in. And if it's 18 feet away, it would hit. But 15 feet away, it's not. All right, so that's just a different way to be able to find these a little bit more exactly than just tracing. Um, that just gives you guys a couple other different ways that you can use the calculator.